everybody. Here's Luke here. I'm feeling a little bit small. I've just been reading our story, The Snail and the Whale. And I was thinking about things that are very, very tiny, like the snail, can you see? And things that are really big and massive and enormous, like the whale. And I was just sat here having a think and reading my story. And I thought, sometimes I feel really small and little and like I want to hide. And sometimes when I feel small, I feel like I can't do anything important. And I was thinking about our little snail. There he is with a lovely big smile. And do you know what, Nursery? One of the things I really love about this story is that it's about something as tiny as a snail that you might not even notice. We walk past them all the time. Sometimes we stand on them by an accident, but they're just bobbing around, going about their business. This is a sea snail, so it lives by the seaside on a rock. But there's snails everywhere. There's probably some outside your house somewhere. They're so tiny. We might not think that they are very important, but in this story, this teeny tiny snail does a really important job. Shall we find out? Now, I know you've listened to this story with Mr B, so I'm not going to read it all. Maybe next week I'll have a turn at reading it, but I just wanted to get to this bit. After the snail goes on all those wonderful adventures all around the world, exploring on the tail of his unlikely friend, the giant humpback whale. So you don't have to be the same to be friends. They're very different, but they get along famously. That doesn't mean they're famous, it means they get on really well. But look, oh no disaster, near the end of the story. How is the whale feeling? Not just sad, a special kind of sad. What do you think's going on? That's right, he's not in the sea anymore, is he? No, he's on land and whales should not be on land. So he's feeling sad, but probably a little bit frightened, a little bit afraid. Maybe even a little bit poorly, because poor humpback whales are meant to be in the deep blue sea, not on the land like you and me. A little snail, oh, little snail said, I feel helpless and terribly small. She was sad. She wanted to help her whale friend, but she thought, I'm too small. There's nothing I can do. But she had a thing. And then she had a brilliant idea because this snail, even though she's very, very small, her heart is very, very big and full of kindness and cleverness because she had a wonderful idea. I've got it, she cried, and she started to crawl. I must not fail, said the tiny snail. Ooh, she's a little bit frightened. She's having to be very, very brave. It's not always easy being small. Oh, this is the bell on the school in the bay, ringing the children in from their play. There's the teacher, there's Miss Lake. <coughs> There's not Miss Lake. Could be Miss Lake, looks a bit like Miss Lake. And here is the snail with the itchy, ooh. Mm, yeah, could still do with a wash. Itchy foot. Now, snails don't have feet, do they? No. That's just a silly saying. If you've got itchy feet, it means you want to travel. You want to walk around lots and lots and see lots of different places. Itchy feet means you want to travel and have adventures. So this is an adventure snail. A snail, a snail, the teacher turns pale. Look, say the children, it's leaving a trail. This is the trail of the tiny snail. A silvery trail saying, Save the whale. So even though that snail was teeny, teeny, tiny, she managed to use all of her skills to write a message and make a big, big difference to her friend. Because that teeny, tiny snail 
writing that message meant that all these people knew what to do and they could help her save the whale. Whale's looking a lot happier now, covered in water like he should be. And then the tide of the sea comes back in and out they go, hip, hip, hooray, saved the day. Wow. So did you know, just like that teeny tiny snail, it doesn't matter how small you are, whether you're in nursery or reception or year one, or even a grown up who feels a little bit small, one person, and that's you, can make a difference. If one person uses all of their kindness and all of their cleverness to do the right thing, you can make a big, big difference. Just like that teeny tiny snail using big words to help the whale. So, I love this story, it's great. So I am gonna have a think today and I'd like you to have a think as well. What? tiny thing could you do today right now in a minute that might make a big difference it could be something really simple like smiling if you smile at someone it gives them a happy feeling and then they might feel happy and smile at someone else and then they might feel happy and smile at someone else and very soon a lot of people are going to be very happy so try it just do a smile or you could read a story for your baby if you've got a baby at home. You could, you could draw a picture for your grown up and give it to them as a present. You could hmm, ask somebody if they'd like some help. Hmm, have a think. What other kind things could you do? Just little. Maybe share your toys. Think of a small kindness that you can do for somebody else. And we'll see, we'll do an experiment nursery to see if it makes a big difference to your week. Okay, I look forward to seeing what lovely kind things you're going to do for each other. Post some pictures on Tapestry and I will see you very soon. Keep on making a big difference. Bye.